Hey, beautiful beings, I'm back. And um, <laughs> so far, I haven't seen many views on my videos, but it's okay. I just like making them because I like spread knowledge and just, um, you know, being a part of giving people new ideas and understanding as we evolve into um, higher realities, you know. And um, one of the higher realities that I've been talking about lately is how we um, in the West fail to honor the three dimensional model that <clears throat> a human being is built off of. And I always call it the mind body soul complex. And so none of the things that I'm talking about are actually really new. To be real honest, a lot of the things that I'm talking about is ancient knowledge that was hidden or covered up and now it's starting to come to the forefront. Um, it's also knowledge from other um, branches of philosophy that um, understand the mind, body, soul complex as a whole. And um, in Chinese medicine, they understand that. They call that yin and yang. So this is nothing new. If you, if you go back and you research some of the things that I'm saying, you will actually realize that um, this, this knowledge is actually accurate. It's correct. And that the science that we have now is basically um, not accurate and not correct. It needs to be um, basically um, combined with um, certain components so that it'll be more accurate and more correct, especially when it comes down to um, why we're sick, why we're having different um, mental illnesses, and um, why we're having all of these problems in the environment. And so um, today I've been really um, getting down um, to the meat of psychic fields. And I know um, I said I was going to do a video on it. It's been taking me a while. But the whole thing is, is when I do bring the information to you, I like to bring information to you um that I've actually researched. I've thought about myself because I don't want to tell you something that someone else said. Even though I am saying it, I'm actually bringing some of my own perspective into it. And then I'm bringing it down to a level to translate it where regular people who haven't went to school and gotten this type of knowledge can understand it, you know, and then they can get a sense of themselves from a true perspective and just um, let that, mi that mind body two dimensional perspective go and bring in the 3D model of mind, body, soul. And then we can start dealing with the soul energy component of ourselves so that we can build better societies. We can solve problems. We can deal with the internal conflict that um, we're experiencing within ourselves. And so um, a lot of what we have um, <clears throat> going on today is a breakdown of society. And um, it's because um, we're not um, reverencing the soul component of, of ourselves. And a lot of people aren't. I'm not just saying us here in the West aren't doing it. But um, there's a lot of people, too are all around the world that are experiencing this because um, a lot of these truths have been hidden from us and now everything is starting to come to the forefront, everything people are doing. So let me tell you, okay, but what I'm going to talk about today is psychic fields and that's going to be going into, you know, all the different behaviors and stuff that people are having and, um, I'm going to basically connect that with um, the regulation of soul energies and how the imbalance or blockage of those energies can cause um, all of the manifestations or symptoms, you can call it, that we're seeing out in society today. I already have a video out about mass shooting syndrome and um, something just, you know, churches, 
churches might want to get a security guard. I mean, you might want to just go ahead and get a security guard because you never know when you might need it. And you might want to go ahead and also, you know, just kind of start checking people for weapons and stuff when they come in. Um, you know, and if you have people that want to be members in an actual part of the church and they're going to be attended regularly, I would even encourage background checks. I really would. And I'm sorry that it's come down to that, but um, we, we need to keep an eye on certain people. And I'm about to tell you why. So um, if you've been checking me out, which probably nobody has yet. <laughs> But once you once you start checking me out, you're going to want to keep checking me out. So I'm not even worried about it. And the fact of the matter is that I just enjoy doing this for a hobby. I think it's really cool that, you know, we can learn something and then we can tell other people or we can post what we learn for other people to discover, you know, whether it be now or later. But um, I think that's really cool. And it's another form of knowledge because we're not just getting um, a news perspective or a politician's perspective or a religious perspective, but we're getting regular everyday people online talking about their experiences, what they've learned, and um, some of the conclusions that they came up with when they have critically thought through things and stuff. And I'm not talking about people that's online gossiping about and I've been attracted to that type of stuff, to the celebrity gossip and stuff. But, you know, um, that's not me anymore. And I can't I can't bring my thoughts and my goals into reality if I'm steadily paying attention to another whole reality that has nothing to do with me. That's a waste of my time and energy. So that's me. That's how I get down. But um, anyways, um, just to let you guys know, you can... Um, Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hazel1190S. That's at Hazel1190S. And um, um, I just do a lot of writings on there. And basically, I just post, you know, some of my conclusions that I've observed, that I've researched, that I've found and came up with, or that, you know, my research has led me to come up with. And then um, I bring it to you and I relate that to current events that's going on or, you know, different subjects and whatnot that apply to um, life from a psycho spiritual perspective. So check me out. And um, <clears throat> I'm just going to be talking to you today about psychic fields. And um, I got a picture. Let me pull it up on my phone. I don't even know how to do these videos, you guys. I'm going to get somebody to help me, though, real soon. And if anybody out there is watching and you believe in what I say and you want to help me, reach out to me, okay? Um, you can email me, too, at higherconsciousness2015 at gmail.com or the manifestation counselor at gmail.com. Either one of those emails will work. Um, but um, when we're talking about psychic fields, psychic fields are an actual thing. Um, they manifest from thought energy, okay? And all psychic fields are is a buildup of thought energy. And we all have a psychic field around us. Every single one of us has a psychic field. And if we could see it, it would look somewhat like, oh shoot, you can't even see it good on my phone. Well, it's okay, but just imagine if it was a big ball of smoke um, all around you, 360 degrees, okay? Whether it was thick or transparent, that would represent your thought energy. All that smoke would represent all your thought energy. So what happens is we're born into the world and... When we're first, when we first come into the world, um, our thought energy is basically um, reactionary, okay? So um, we're basically learning, we're basically growing, so we try different things, and it's always a reaction to what the environment has to offer. So, okay, just look at that as a kid sees fire. So what do they do? They either... Say, oh, what's that? Fear it. Or 
they be brave and stick their hand out in it and get burned. And then they learn about what fire is. So after that, then they have um, basically a mental construct of what fire is and that builds up in their psychic environment. So now they know what fire is and they can adjust their behavior accordingly. They will no longer put their hand over that fire. And so um, I'm just going to read you a little bit about what I wrote about the psychic field because um, that was just a small introduction to kind of um, get you acquainted with what a psychic field is and how it works. So um, when I read this um, about your psychic field, understand that there are other things at play. So don't take this all literally. Remember to understand um that you can um, definitely um, do other things to help yourself and kind of um, improve your psychic field. Okay, you can make that smoke more transparent instead of thick. And so um, I'm just gonna um, give you another um, meaning of how psychic fields are built and how. We relate to that in our society. If you've ever heard of a term called carrying baggage, a lot of people refer to that in terms of a relationship and they say this person is carrying too much baggage. Well, what does that mean? What does too much baggage mean? Well, the meaning of carrying baggage is very deep. Mental energies account for how we live our life in this plane of existence. And here is what happens to your thought. One, some thoughts are expressed as with behavior. So some of our thoughts we translate into our, into action and um, we actually, you know, represent that thought with an actual behavior. Some thoughts, two, or number two, some thoughts are filed away into the subconscious. So some thoughts, thoughts that we can't do anything with or even some thoughts that are painful for us, sometimes we file those thoughts away into our subconscious. And um, that's a part of our brain that we generally don't access on a daily basis, or at least we don't. We think we don't, but um, people are learning that somehow we're accessing that through a like a reflective response. So even though we may not be accessing the actual thought, um, there may be some behaviors that re result from that thought, and it's just a reflection of what, what's actually inside of the subconscious instead of what's conscious, so that it actually goes against what people think that they're trying to portray to other people as far as their behavior is concerned. And then there's number three, all thoughts create your psychic field, as I said before. And um, all psychic fields are a collection or buildup of mental energies. Envision yourself walking with a huge cloud of smoke around you that extends 360 degrees all around you. If you go to a psychic, this is one way that they can read you, okay? So people that are um, extra sensitive to the subtle energies of people. They can be um, extra sensitive to your mental energies and they can actually go into your psychic field and read things that have happened to you in your past and see the road that you're headed down in the future. As I stated before, there's a lot of variables involved in that because we do have free will. We do have the ability to change and transcend negative thoughts or even positive thoughts. Um, so, um, you know, even though you go to a psychic, what they say isn't written in stone. But they can read you through your uh, psychic field, okay? Your buildup of mental energies. And so, um, psychic fields actually exist in your behavior patterns or your habits or your behavior cycles. You know, a lot of people go through behavior cycles where, 
you know, they do something for so long or it might change with the seasons. It all just depends. But certain people are into different cycles of behavior that repeat itself over and over again or different patterns of behavior to where the, the exact behavior may not repeat, but they're finding themselves in the same situation over and over again, okay? And they, um, they are a result of them, and your vibrations are the energy you emit out into the universe as well. This is what people um, term as baggage. Because that energy that you admit out is going to um, reflect what's going on in your psychic field, okay? So, um, basically in our psychic field, we've got, you know, different thoughts building up every day. And um, depression is another way um, that I can explain this part of it, which is the buildup, okay? Okay. And um, depression is actually when you have a buildup of such dark thoughts about yourself that um, you it, it ends up um, actually manifesting as um, a, de a decreased um, output of certain electrochemical energies. And um, I'm going to go get my book in a minute so I can tell you what energy it is. But um, this is why um, people are depressed. I think it's a lack of dopamine or something like that or norepinephrine. One of those. You can look it up. But anyways, um, this is how um, this is how we're living. Okay, this is how we're living in this plane. And so you know, a lot of things that they call mental illness is. Um, a reflection of some of this psychic field that I'm telling you about. So say for instance, okay, we already said dep depression was a buildup of dark thoughts. So what about post-traumatic stress disorder? Okay, that would be the buildup of dark memories into your psychic field. You have that, you're carrying that around. A lot of this energy needs to be cleared up it needs to be gotten rid of, okay? But um, a lot of people don't know how to get rid of that energy. They don't know how to clear that energy up. So, you know, we have certain people who are trained in that, people like me who are energy workers. Or we have other people, you know, psychics. We have different types of ministers. If, if they're strong in their practices and whatnot and their energy is, is their positive energy, their light is, is stronger than the darkness or more than the darkness within them. I call that a light to darkness ratio. So if you have more light than darkness, if they have more light than darkness, they, they can probably come and get rid of some of those negative energies that you're carrying around in your mental psychic field. Okay. So with this psychic field, um, you know, we have all type of things going on, like people carrying baggage, you know, into relationships. And then, you know, once that baggage is carried in, it affects the relationship and the relationship turns out not to be so successful, you know. Um, and we have to be careful with that. So you need to understand what's in your psychic energy field. Um and so um, I'm just going to give you a little synopsis in my piece I call Environmental Influences Over Psychic Field. For a long time now, it has been common knowledge that the environment has influence over us. This can be true. However, it can also go the complete opposite way. So... You think that your environment controls you. People are always saying, oh, there's not enough jobs and this and that. There are other people on the other side of the spectrum who are not saying there's no jobs. They're actually creating jobs or creating their own jobs. OK, that's what I'm doing right now, even though I do have credentials and I do have degrees and I am going to school to be a doctor. You know, I'll be doing creating my own 
niche, okay? That's why I'm coming to you right now so you can understand my perspective. And you can see, because I'm not the only one with this perspective, but you can see how this can help you. And you will be able to um, contact people like myself to help you with different things, okay? But um, that's the whole deal that we're dealing with here. It's either you're going one way or the other. If you're waiting on somebody to give you a job, then you're inspired from the outside. You have what I call or psychologists call extrinsic motivation. You're motivated by the environment and things outside of you, okay? People who can create their own job, they're motivated from within, okay? And that's a different kind of motivation. And I'll tell you, um, as a motivational coach and a manifestation counselor, um, these, um, this, this is, this is a higher reality right here. Okay. This is not your average. Okay. We have to think this way to do this. It's true, but you're also working from another route, an energy group. Okay. The energy centers that you have inside of your body. They go like this down the middle of your body, okay? They help the right side and your and the left side of your brain to be able to reason, to figure things out, to make plans, to organize them and carry them out. When you don't have that, then you tend not to be motivated to do much of anything. So my whole um, mission right now is to get people to understand um, a lot of people, I don't care what color you are, but a lot of my people need this information too. And we need to start realizing that religion, religion might smooth things over a little bit, but it's a lot of people in religion right now where religion is not enough for them and they're pretty deranged. Okay. They're, they're in religion. Um, and it goes so far as to people building cults, like, that's the obsessive side of religion, you know, and um, it's just not enough to read the Bible, um, to pray and stuff. We have to start getting our energy centers in order. And it's not to say that you have to stop doing your religious practices, but you need to incorporate other things into your life to help you so you can have a better quality of life. Now, my granddaddy owned a church, okay? And every single um, person in my family were affected by the cycle of teen pregnancy. So I don't see a connection between religion and improving your quality of life. Now, I see a connection between um, religion and having something outside of yourself to believe in. But that's not helping people from inside. So they can build up those reasoning skills and um, be able to bring their thoughts into reality and not the negative side or reflections of their subconscious. I mean, actually building um, life situations, um, circumstances and conditions that favor you and favor the best outcome for you and actually favor the highest expression of yourself. Because those outcomes, those circumstances allow you to be able to model the right behavior. It'll um, allow you to be able to um, play the different roles that you need to play in life, like being a mom or a dad, or being a husband or a wife, or being whoever you are at your job or place of employment, or being whoever you are, you know, to the people in your neighborhood or your church or your community. And so, um, you know, I have um, the Institute of Core Confidence, and that's a place where people can go to um, deal with these types of things. If you're needing help, I can help you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And at the Institute of Core Confidence, we use different um, art and um, other healing therapies like um, breathing techniques and whatnot to help people regulate the life-sustaining energies that come through your body to help you be able to do this, okay? I can't stress to people how important this is. 
I mean, this has to do, I mean, I deal with, I, I'm coming from a psycho spiritual perspective, which means I specifically deal with the connections between those life sustaining energies coming through that system and the way that it manifests on a mental level and the mental processes involved in that. Okay. But there's also a physical aspect to that, too. That's why we have what you call holistic health and wellness, because that incorporates um, the three dimensional model of the body, mind, soul component into treating people for their illnesses. OK, and um, I look at it more from a mental perspective. So I would um, really do healing and um, different techniques to help people improve their mental processes and um, how they're able to do reasoning and whatnot. And basically, I do that um, by um, looking at the energy root of the problem first. And that's what we need to start looking at because we're really actually, the core of us is energy. We have an energetic battery inside of us. That is what keeps us living, walking, talking, and doing everything every day. So um, on to this. I'm going to finish reading. I don't like to just read, though. I like to do some talking, too, so you guys can really see my perspective where I'm coming from. And it doesn't seem like it's fake. But um, some people have figured out the formula for how to... Um, Oh, you can have influence over your environment. Some people have figured out the formula for how to do that, and most have not. And this goes back to our psychic fields and how they are built. So once again, we're talking about psychic fields. And we're talking about the buildup of mental energies because that is what creates psychic fields. So um, your thought energies are building around you and make up the person that you are. All of your action and reaction comes from the energy swirling around your centers. We talked about your centers. I mentioned that earlier. And um, I'm going to do a video about that soon. But um, just to let you know, that's what I'm talking about when I say swirling around your centers. Those are the energies coming in. They're being intercepted. They're being organized. They're being translated. And they're being um, basically sent out. Um, into the brain to, um, through the neurons and electrochemical messages going throughout the body, um, making sure that you can do all the things that you do with your body and with your mind. And so the intrinsic motivation of your being is limited to the balance of energies that come in from your etheric self or your soul self. So that's what I'm talking about, those life-sustaining energies coming in um, that is the basic root of your motivation, that any type of motivation, whether it be um, uh, academic, um, sexual, um, emotional, whatever it is, all and any motivation comes from the energy that comes through these centers, these life-sustaining energies, okay? Um if you don't have a steady flow coming through, your actions and reactions will be based on what is outside of you. Outside of you means in your environment. So you'll be responsive to everything as far as people, um, different stimuli, um, just anything outside of yourself, okay? This is how programming and conditioning works. So when you talk about rewards and punishment, this is how they're able to um, use this in our society as a way to keep people programmed, okay? So when people go to jail, that's a punishment, okay? When you get um, a promotion at your job, that's a reward, okay? Um, being controlled by the environment is very common these days. That's how we are programmed by our society to react to the stimuli in the environment, okay? Um, I can't tell you why it's all like that. But what that has done is um, it's actually decreased the life-sustaining energies and it's blocked some of them that has 
um, that we need to come through and create these electrochemical messages. So this is where we're getting some of the negative behaviors and whatnot from people from because this is not happening. They've been trained, guys, to uh, look to their environment, to react to their environment only. There's nothing within them. So they're almost like um, a walking dead person. OK, if you if you if you understand awakening, that's what that's about. It's coming out of that state and being aware of who you are and you actually taking control of your vehicle and being more proactive instead of reactive. And so um, this is how rewards and punishment is able to give you self-worth. This is what makes you feel like, you know, if you're not doing different things that our society says that you should be doing, you'll feel bad about yourself or you'll feel like, oh, you know, you're not really living up to what you're supposed to be living up to. So until you get that intrinsic motivation to understand what your actual true purpose is and that that has nothing to do with the construct of society, then you're going to be confused by that and your self-worth is going to be based on what the environment has to offer you, what they're saying about you and how people perceive you, okay? Um, this is why you crave attention and validation. In other words, you are motivated by things, people, food, money, etc. So honestly, in our society, we have what you call the American dream, you know, where people can get that house and that car that they want and they have the career that they want that they're making six figures from and everybody respects them because of this. And this is the definition of a fine life, a life of quality experiences, the American dream, right? Wrong. OK, you couldn't be more wrong. That's why I said with that, you'll be controlled by money, food, because you'll if you can't get the finest food, you know, to live out that definition, um, you, you'll hurt behind that. You're going to feel it, it's going to impact you because, you know, those are the things that make you feel good and you don't feel good from the inside. OK, <clears throat> if you lose that job and, and that money, that, that six figure income's not coming in. And you've got to get a job at McDonald's. Hey, <laughs> you're not going to fare too well. Um, or even people, uh, food, like I said, they want to find, they want to eat at the finest restaurants and everything. That's what fuels some people. Um, I hear them on, I know you heard them on the realities. The first thing they say is they call each other bum bees. Okay. And they be saying, oh, you just hate no me because I got this, 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 that. Okay. That's an indicator that they're controlled by their environment. They're mad, but they're saying they're basically saying, hey, you you can't um you can't get to me because I got this, 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 and that, and this is what speaks for who I am. Okay? Those are people who are controlled by the environment. And I love you. I'm sorry. If you feel some type of um, negative feelings toward me because I said that, but that just means you really need to, um, you know, just just take a, a check of yourself, you know, and, and really observe yourself and what's going on with yourself. Because this shouldn't shake anybody up if you're aware of who you are and you're grounded in who you are. So, um... Intrinsic motivation will result in attracting to you what you want while its counterpart does the opposite. So um, when you have intrinsic motivation, you're basically able to take your desires, your ideas, your creations and bring them into reality. And you can pretty much create a life that you desire or is similar to being along the lines of what you desire. Um, and, and that can be very fulfilling. Um, this is why there are people who have everything, but they are unhappy, and people who have very little that have mastered contentment. 
So, you know, I say that to say, you know, we do have rich people in our society who are suffering. They have some of the same problems that poor people have. And then you actually have poor people who can amaze some of us. And you're like, wow, you know, this person has really great energy. And they don't live by the definition of what society says, you know, is a great person. They don't have a big house and a nice car. And they don't have a grand job that, you know, everybody dreams of having with the six-figure income. But they're still um, enjoying life. They, you can tell that, you know, they're, they have a lot of positive energy flowing through them and their condition, their situation is not adverse to what they desire. And so um, there is one other formula. Fulfillment kind of works this way from outside in. So, you know, people can like, you know, even though I said career with the six figure income, some people can have a career that is really great and they like doing it and it really fulfills them like a teacher. Sometimes teacher talk talks, teachers talk, ugh, sorry, teachers talk of being really uh, fulfilled and rewarded by being able to impart knowledge and seeds into their students, okay? And so that's all that saying. Um, and if people find fulfillment in themselves through their environment, they can achieve contentment. So it can happen two ways. But know that if any of those things are taken away, that if, so if that teacher loses their job, they're going to be impacted by that and possibly in a negative way if they don't know how to transcend the negative feelings that they might experience or the negative emotions that they might experience because um, something was taken away from them, uh, feelings of grief or loss. Um, our psychic field starts getting built as a child. This is why physically sexually, or emotionally abusing children scars them for life. I can't stress to people how important it is to um, get your parenting skills on point to where you're conscious. And I'm going to be doing conscious parenting videos too. Um, I have a page on Facebook, so all this stuff goes hand in hand with that, you know, so I can, you know, let people know who want this who want to know, who want to understand um, and understand, you know, why it is that we need to um, have better practices of discipline when it comes to raising our children. Um, modeling is the best way that you can do it because your kids are always going to copy you. So if you model the behavior that you want them to um Portray, no problem, pretty much. But um, other things go along with that. I said, like keeping them away from people who are contrary to what um, you know what is trying to what you're trying to create for your child's psychic field. And so, um, listen to this because I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Most people who become murderers or violent criminals were abused as children. That is a for sure way to create imbalances when puberty hits and the hormones and electrochemical message are intersecting. So um, I, I just wanted to say, you know, teenagers, it's really hard for them, guys. Let's have um, a little bit more sympathy and compassion for teenagers because uh, they are experiencing so much. They're going through hormonal changes. Um, their life-sustaining energies are beginning to basically um, translate over into hormones and electrochemical messages, and they're firing, and there's a new feeling, okay, that comes along with that, a new awareness of self. Um, it's mostly physical, because it has to do with our gender and who we are sexually more than anything. And so, you know, those um, 
those neurons are firing off in their brain. And um, if they've been abused or traumatized in any type of way, um, <laughs> you're going to see some issues begin to develop. Um, they can be as small as, you know, some resentment and um, dysfunctional type behaviors to where, you know, they don't want to listen to you or hear what you got to say. You know, if there's no consistency, you know, in other things such as modeling or, you know, if they've experienced, you know, the breakup of their family through divorce or, you know, dad's not around anymore, people have experienced death of a parent it's all kind of things that come into play but it's really really hard for teenagers okay because of this so let us try to have more sympathy and compassion on teenagers and what's going on with them as far as you know their life sustaining energies coming through and you know they're dealing with all the things in their psychic field and all the mental energies that have built up over the years from things that have happened to them because nowadays kids are protected many things happen to children each and every day they're molested um people do all types of things to them a lot of people just call their kids stupid or dumb or you know they don't pay attention to their kids because um you know, their job is more important. I mean, there's a lot of things that keep us distracted on a daily basis and we don't even realize it. We're not aware of sometimes. So <clears throat> let us just take the time to be aware of those things and make sure that we're helping to, you know, build um, positive psychic fields around our children. Um, that is a for sure way to create imbalances when puberty hits and hormones and electrochemicals are intersecting. A struggle is created in teenage beings between doing what is pleasing and expected for others and what is pleasing to the emotions. They begin to want to feel better and whatever the environment offers to support this is what they begin to want to experience. It's stronger when a person is Guard. Since something outside of them caused the ill feelings, then logic says it's going to take something outside of them to fix it. So here, you know, here we have a setup, you know, um, where a child begins to depend on their environment or their environment has impacted them so much that they're also looking for their environment to impact them in a positive way and they may not have the tools in the in that environment the tools may not be available for that to happen and that's why it's important to have core confidence from the inside of ourselves it's important to have intrinsic motivation okay that's what core confidence influences intrinsic motivation so that way you can reach inside of yourself and understand how to fix yourself and your situation and your environment and the things around you. And as I stated before, that's the difference between a person who is controlled by their environment and a person who isn't. They understand how to go inside themselves to create, okay, their realities, okay? We are creators of our realities. So I believe that. Um, I've actually observed it and I found it to be true. Your thoughts turn into your reality. And so um, these um, psychic um, <clears throat> these psychic fields that are building around our children, if we want them to be successful and live in positive conditions and, you know, have inner peace and different things like that, we have to help them to build healthy psychic fields, okay? That means watching the way that we discipline, what type of things we expose our kids to, who, what type of people we expose our kids to, and, you know, just making sure that we protect them, you know, as best as we can. Sometimes we don't always have control over everything, but that should be your first priority. If you don't have control over what's going on with your children, get control over that first, because I'm telling you, it's a lot harder to go back and heal with your child. So that way you can be forgiven for not protecting them than it is to just do everything that you can to protect them. And so um, 
A struggle is creating in teenage bees. Okay, we already said that. Um, since something outside of them caused the ill feelings, and Logic says it's going to take something outside of them to fix it. And like I said, if the support, if the environmental supports are not in place, that means loving and supportive parents. That means opportunities, you know, for them to express themselves in a positive way. Um, that means they're, you know, they're getting proper nutrition for growth and development of their their body and mind as well. You know, and they're also getting fed, you know, conversation and social um, interaction that's um, stimulating to um, who they are, you know, helping them figure out where they're headed in life and, you know, how to make wise decisions and stuff like that. So if you don't have that inside of you, it's going to have to come from outside of you. That's why we have different things like religions. Because they were made to teach people from outside of themselves um, uh, processes to control um, their behavior or for other people to control their behavior. And so that's why we have that. But when we control our behavior from the inside and we um, um, observe that we know the difference between right and wrong and that we act on it and that we're able to organize our thoughts and reason correctly so we can make better decisions, <laughs> you won't need anything in the environment to control you. You will be controlling your environment. And so um, some people never heal while other people struggle. And very few people have the chance to transcend this cycle of behavior. And what I mean by this cycle of behavior is that people who go through these um, traumatizing experiences where they become scarred from abuse, um, these type of people, um, they end up developing um, different patterns of behavior, different cycles. Some people get into drugs. Some people get into obsessive, compulsive, you know, type behavior, you know, where, you know, they're doing all these, you know, different rituals and stuff every day to um, basically decrease their fear. Um, or people are getting into religion. And no, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with religion itself. But there are people who actually allow a religion to control them, okay? And they don't use their own brain to understand things, okay? So we can have religion and every religion has beliefs, but then we have our own um, energies coming in that help us develop reasoning skills, okay? So we can make a decision and say, you know what? Uh, this religious teacher said this, but let me look at their life to see if they're really living this, to see if I should be following what they said. Okay, that's reasoning. And so um, a lot of people don't have that. So they get caught up in these cycles, drug abuse, dependency, addiction, codependency, um, you know, all these type of issues that... Um, are so-called connected to poverty, but like I said, people with money have the issue as well, okay, because of these uh, energies, these life-sustaining energies that should be coming through um, these and translating these thoughts from our mental energies and psychic fields into our realities. Um, and this is how others take power from people, making them unsure of their selves, as I said, um, you know, that's a perfect example of, um, say, like an abusive uh, type relationship, okay? A person who is, who has experienced abuse in a relationship, um, most of the time they find themselves um, in a situation where they become codependent on that other person and that person has the power to either make them happy and make them feel, you know, Great and just, you know, over over the heels in love, or the person can actually make them feel like they're nothing. They're no one. Okay. Um, that's power that um people gain over other people when 
people allow things in their environment to control them. So, um, um, uh, prostitutes and pips, that's a perfect situation. Um, people who find themselves getting controlled by a pimp, um, mostly they're used, they're, they're, um, motivated by the environment, things in the environment. They have extrinsic motivation. So they can only be motivated by things outside of themselves. They can't find a motivation within themselves to, you know, get up and get moving and let me get away from this type of life. Let me let me find another way that I can make money besides, you know, this or whatever. And so um, thoughts that follow create a psychic field full of self-doubt, low self-esteem and reactionary pattern behaviors. Is because these this type of personality can't find it within themselves, okay? So they begin to have negative feelings about themselves when that environment isn't providing that support um, for them to feel good, okay? So that's what I was saying about people having control over you. One day the person's, oh, I love you, baby, and everything, and you're smiling, and you're happy, you're like, oh, he loves me, or she loves me. And then the next day, they're calling you a jerk and an ass or the B word or saying that you're a lousy partner or you're ugly. And then, boom, you sink back into your lows. And, you know, that's once again, going back to the kid thing, that's why we're not supposed to tell kids they're stupid or, you know, they're dumb or stuff like that. These things um, actually do get internalized and. You know, people feed that knowledge back to their cells in thought. And it creates those psychic fields that um, I'm talking about. And so um, people can be easily programmed because they will look outside for stimulation, as I said before. And if those, you know... If that stimuli isn't around or that stimuli isn't responding back to that person, validating that person the way that they need, then it's going to be some drama, okay? That's how these little fights where people be in domestic violence, that's how stuff like that starts, okay? <laughs> um, this is the beginning of all impulsive, obsessive, compulsive, addictive, dependency, behavior, cycles, as I stated before, drug dependency, all kind of impulsive and compulsive behaviors, you know, people taking risks by having unprotected sex or sleeping with people they have no type of soul connection to or spiritual connection to, you know, these are the type of things that's going to start happening. Um, and that is what is meant. Um, oh, this is why people have to learn to take back their power and to motivate their own selves. This is what we need to do, guys, okay? In this society, we're not doing that. We're depending on everything outside of ourselves, especially money, okay? How much money people have is really a way that people define other people. So a lot of people are motivated by that outside factor of currency and, um, you know, with the economy going up and down. <laughs> if the dollar loses its value, those type of people right there are going to be the first people to short circuit. And they may take their own lives or the lives of other people. So um, this is just a heads up. You know, this is what's going on, you guys. Um, and that is what is meant by doing your work. So um, I like uh, Ilyana Van Zandt. She, she's, she's a good uh, spiritual teacher. And she um, helps people dig deep within themselves from a psycho-spiritual perspective um, to heal. And um, that's what's meant by doing your work. You got to go back. You got to restructure yourself. Get used to having that body, mind, soul component working. That soul component needs to start working because that's your core. 
That's where your core confidence comes from. Your intrinsic motivation. That's where it comes from, guys. If you, if that's not working right, you're going to be dependent on the environment 24-7 to help you succeed. And um, how likely is it that somebody's just going to come and give you a six-figure job? It's not going to happen. So, you know, if, if you're if <clears throat> living in poverty is sometimes... Um, because of the cars that we've been dealt in society, but it also extends from a soul um, perspective of being deficient in your energy currents, okay? When you're deficient in your energy currents, it's, it's not going to, man you're going to be, def it's going to manifest as outside deficiency in your um, stream of income, Okay. And I'm not saying that you have to have a whole lot of money, but whatever lifestyle that you desire, you should be able to create that lifestyle. However much money it takes to create that lifestyle, you should be able to pull in that amount of money, okay? If everything's going okay with your soul energy, you'll have the creativity, you'll have the ideas, you'll be able to organize them, and you'll be able to create your own platform so that you'll be able to present your ideas to the world, whether it be through a company that employs you or whether you create your own job. And um, I'm just going to read the last of this to you. Um, but that's what's meant by doing your, your work. So and even, you know, when I talked about carrying baggage around, if you want to get rid of that baggage, you got to do some of that work. You got to get that um, intrinsic motivation back, that you know, strong self-worth and self-esteem to stand on that comes from the inside and not by what society's definition of you are or what you've accomplished or what you can do or how much money that you can make at the moment. Um, this is the real argument of nature versus nurture. So when I say this is the real argument, we say in nature versus nurture on the psychology end that um, we're debating whether our genes control the outcome of our lives or whether the environment controls the outcome of our lives. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be either one of those things, okay? And um, I'm not going to argue about the gene thing, but that that is almost irrelevant because it's a lot of times where people who have the same genes as somebody who doesn't have the same life um, quality, you know, because they've made poor decisions or you know, don't know how to express their reality um, out, you know, out into um, matter, um, that doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? What, um, what What's really going on is that um, getting our work done and um, nature versus nurture, that's basically telling us that um, there's already predictions for our outcome based on what type of um, and, uh, circumstances and situations and people are in our lives or based on what type of um, bio, um, biological um, things that we've inherited, you know, from our, our ancestors or our parents or whatever, okay? Um, that is absolutely not true. That's why it says that you can be whatever you want to be and do what you want to do. But people just don't know the formula for that. But it takes work, especially if you've been through abuse, if you've been through trauma, if you've experienced rape, if you've experienced being molested, um, just any type of dysfunctional things that we've experienced in our families, in our homes, all of these things um, come to they create imbalances in us. So we have to go back and do the work. So that's why I said it's real important that we work on, on and keep our priority focus on building, um, helping our kids to build um, a positive um, psychic field around themselves, a healthy one. Um, so nature versus nurture to me is basically... Um, the nature part is 
having the supports or whatever or being um, influenced by your environment. And the nurture part to me is being influenced by your inner core. Okay, the core confidence of you, um, the one that is basically operating from soul energy. Um, either you control you or your environment controls you through your psychic field. So um, once again, I'm already going in 59 minutes, but um, I hope that you guys understood what I was saying. Um, if you don't take control of yourself and have that intrinsic motivation, outside factors in the environment are going to control you. Um, how the environment defines you, accomplishments, accolades. Rewards, punishments, praise, encouragement, all those things are going to be what you need to feel good about yourself or to do a great job or to be inspired to create and to um, live out your ideas and bring them into reality. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, about psychic fields today and I hope you learned something about how they work. Work on your psychic field. Start to build um, good mental energy. Um, also, if you need to clear, you know, yourself of negative energy, burn sage. You know, burn sage. Keep a glass of water. You can, What you can do is you can um, pray over that water and you can use your intention to have negative energy to be collected inside of that water. Look that up on the internet. They have some articles on that that are very interesting. But from a metaphysical perspective, um, collect that energy. Get that energy out and get it away from you. If you have objects that you're holding on to that um, are connected with people that you've had a bond with, who um, you've separated from negatively or have been a negative impact in your have caused you, you know, a negative impact in your life, get rid of that stuff. That stuff is carrying negative energy, okay? Because things from our environment do influence things that we do, even though we are trying to build up our core confidence, we still have to recognize that there is a component of ourselves that responds to the environment. But it will become less and less as you work on that and you try to um, build that core um, of yourself. You get those life-sustaining energies coming through and you, you'll know because your motivation will be through the roof. You'll be able to do things that you couldn't do before, like lose weight, clean up the house, cook a, a dinner, um, look for jobs, put in applications, um, start a business, um, get that six-figure job that you've been wanting, um, go to school, make good grades. Um, you'll be able to do anything you want to do. Okay, that's how people juggle all these hectic schedules and stuff. Okay, they got that intrinsic motivation. And if they don't, they just have a fulfilling job or career um, that um, they're actualizing. And it's really giving them some fulfillment in their lives. All right, guys. Um, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it, beautiful beings. I love you. Um, I hope I didn't offend anybody with anything I said. If I did, I'm sorry, but I said it out of love, so I know that you'll understand. And um, you can hit me up at HigherConsciousness2015 at gmail.com. If you have any questions about this, leave me a comment in the comment box. Definitely click like if you like what I'm saying. And... Um, you're on the same frequency of knowledge with me. Um, let me know if you want to hear more about psychic fields or what you want to hear about. Um, I'm always coming to people from a psycho-spiritual perspective. And like I said, that um, I'm coming from the point of dealing with psychology and mental processes and how they're connected to um, our energy systems. And um, all the energies that we express as human beings. So um, you guys have a wonderful and blessed day or evening. And um, visit me for more knowledge and information or click subscribe.